Hey, this is Matthew, and welcome back to Nerd News Today. And we're continuing our look at the first wave of Super 7's New Japan Pro Wrestling action figures. I already talked in other videos, of course, about how long I've been waiting for these toys, and I am so excited to finally have them in hand. And hopefully, I haven't been too disappointed by them. Hopefully, I'm liking them as much as I currently am once they get out of the box, because, hey, I basically filmed these intros before I actually take them out of the package, so I have no idea what my reaction has been so far. You guys do, I don't. Tell me in the comments if you want. But hey, today we are here to talk about Tomohiro Ishii. He is the stone pit bull of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Hard hitting, hard head, cool gimmick, great look, and a great choice to have as part of the first wave of these New Japan Pro Wrestling figures. And just a heads up before I start going too deeply here on Ishii, I already did a video where I looked at all four figures together. I gave my thoughts on the price point, on their articulation as a whole. Uh, just kind of an overview of the entire wave. So if you just want to see that, go ahead and check out this link. Or better yet, watch it after this, because I'm going to go a lot more in-depth on things I don't really discuss as much in this video. So it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't yet. But let's go ahead and jump into what this toy is all about, and let's start with the packaging. So every New Japan Pro Wrestling figure, and basically every Super 7 figure ever, comes first in a brown mailer box. That's to keep it protected while it's in the mail. Make sure it comes to your house as mint as possible. Once you take it out of the brown mailer box, you get then the figure that you're seeing here, except it's covered in an additional lid. And that lid has a sort of metallic New Japan logo on the front of it too. And you're gonna hear this exact phrasing in the next video for Will Ospreay's figure too, because I'm not recording this again. But once you do slide the lid off of him, you'll see here we get a great window into what this toy comes with. And there is a lot that it comes with here. It's got a lot of great accessories. I really like how the front of the box has this ring on it too. You can see the ropes, you can see the turnbuckles. It's got the blue corner, the red corner, which is the thing that they do in New Japan. Makes it feel a lot more like an actual fight. It's pretty nice packaging, although it is a little short, a little squat, kind of bulky. Nothing to really talk about on the sides either. You just see that the ropes continue around the back. The back of the box has the Super 7 logo and the New Japan logo, as well as our wrestler's name in Japanese and in English, followed by a set of statistics for the wrestler as well as what their finisher is in this case. So previously the guys had their Twitter handles posted in the back of the box. Ishii, I guess, doesn't have Twitter, doesn't use it maybe, I don't really know, but there's no Twitter handle on this one. So instead, we've got his finisher, which is the Vertical Brain Buster. But really, you can't keep the Stone Pitbull in package for too long, so we've got to get him out of the box and into the ring right now. All right, the Stone Pitbull is on the loose now. He's out of the packaging. Let's go ahead and talk about him. And first things first, I gotta talk about that likeness. I think this is the best likeness of all the figures. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the other head here. You guys can see that. I think this is the best head of all the guys here. Like every angle, every possible side. This is totally Ishii. Like, wow, there's no denying it. This is a brilliant head sculpt. Yeah, you know, I was kind of mixed on Tanahashi. I was kind of mixed on Okada. Like they were good, but they weren't perfect. I think this one is definitely perfect. I think they nailed it. This looks so good. So in terms of entrance gear, we have his Chaos Stable Stone Pitbull t-shirt. That's pretty much it. You know, he's got the championship belt, of course, around his waist as well. But in terms of entrance gear, yeah, it's just that t-shirt and that works fine for me. Now, it's kind of interesting about that t-shirt you'll see as it rotates is that there's no like tab or anything for it. There's no Velcro attachment to it. This is apparently one solid piece. And that's a surprising choice too. Like, I can't recall too many times we've seen solid pieces anymore. For the most part, when companies are doing these shirts that are meant to be removable, they've got some Velcro on them or something else in the back. In this case, not so much. In fact, case in point, here is the t-shirt that came with the John Cena Ultimate Edition that we'll be using so much in this video here. And you guys can see right in the back, there is the Velcro. I'll just go ahead and open it up. There's the Velcro. So you can just go ahead and do that. And that's how you get the toy on. But in the case of Ishii, there is none. It's just a solid piece. So uh, I'm going to take that off in a minute. But before we do that, I do want to talk about the championship belt because that's already on its waist. So why the heck wouldn't I talk about that first? So this is the never weight championship belt. It's kind of like the open weight title. And Ishii is kind of like run dominant with that belt. It's a really cool belt and a kind of fun division too because you get to see a lot of interesting, more hard hitting battles with it. But again, here is for comparison, a WWE and an AEW belt. These are vac metalized. This is not. So, you know, obviously I would prefer it to be this kind of more shiny color. This belt, it kind of looks all right though, the way it is. Actually, I don't know why I prefer this one. I shouldn't say I prefer it, you know, better than being vac metalized, but it kind of is okay the way it is. Obviously, I would prefer it to be much shinier, of course, but it's not terrible. Although I, I will say again, like in terms of detail, yeah, you know, I feel like this medallion on the front has especially a lot more detail in it and the ones on the side too. Feels like there's more than the IWGP tiles we looked at so far. Still not quite there though, you know, it's still missing a few elements that would have made it, that would have made it better for me. So let's take this belt off though. And here's that enclosure system. Huh, that came off fairly easily. All right. And uh, that's kind of stuck to his pants there, which is something to be watching out for. And you know, again, the enclosure system on these belts here, you can actually see it warping already. Uh, you know, gotta be careful with them. I'm, I'm definitely a little concerned about them long-term. These look very tenuous. Uh, these look like they could easily rip. So yeah, just watch out with these belts. Uh, let's go ahead and get this shirt off now if we can. Huh, how is this gonna work? Well, I'm gonna pop the head. Let's try, 
Let's try doing that first. I think that's going to make my life easier here. Uh, I don't like how this shirt is on him. <laughs> I don't like this. This needs to be Velcro. This is unnecessary. Uh, I'm so... What I'm mainly concerned about is I don't want to rip the shirt. And uh, this looks like it's so form-fitting, too. Like, how are you not going to rip it apart at some point? I think I need to take the elbow pad off also. See, he's got his elbow pad on him. Uh, we're going to take a hand off. Yeah, this is why you need to put Velcro on your figures. And I, I guess they made the choice not to do that just because they don't want to have that seam. They want it to be seamless. But I, I don't keep my shirts on my toys, generally speaking, just because of staining. All right, this should be fine now. This should go off pretty easily. This is so much effort to get this off. All right, I got it off. There's some lint flying all over him. You can see there's a lot of uh, particles on him. In fact, I, yeah, I'm, I'm like already worried about staining issues. And I can definitely see some already here. So uh, there are ways to avoid the staining issue I'm talking about. Because, you know, basically if you leave a fabric like this on a toy for too long, ultimately it will bleed onto the plastic. And you will not be able to get that off really that easily at all. I'm going to swap heads too. So I would say if you get this toy and you want to have him loose, get that shirt right off him. If you give the shirt, I've heard, a cold bath in some soapy water, that should help take care of some of that excess dye. But yeah, long term, don't leave it on him. Get that shirt right off. Uh, all right, I'm going to get the elbow pad back on too. Pretty sure it's on this side. Yeah, never putting that shirt back on again. It's a cool shirt, but that's a lot of effort. I, I hate that they did that. I feel like I understand why they made that choice, but it was the terrible, terrible choice. So yeah, you can see on the other head on Ishii, these are great heads. Yeah, like really, come on, tell me these aren't the best heads in the entire series. I love these heads. Uh, so body-wise, he's got a very, very unique body sculpt here. It's thick just like him. You gotta have it be thick like him too, because he's a short boy, he's a thick boy. It is unique to him. It also has that weightlifting belt you can see around his waist here. It's even got a little logo on there. That's cool. So yeah, he's got like a lot of unique parts, and I like that about him. I like that this is definitely a bulkier figure. It's also a body type I could definitely see them going back to in the future for other characters, for probably like 90s guys too, if they ever do that, if they ever do any retro guys. Like, this is totally like a Ricky Choshu kind of body to me. I also like, you know, how his arms are kind of small too, which is, it's very realistic. You know, this is very much just like Ishii in the ring. This really looks and feels just like him, every part of it. So the elbow pad is removable, as you guys already saw. Pants are cool. Uh, you know, we've, these are fairly simple outfits compared to like everybody else that he's, we've looked at so far. I mean, even the shoes, uh, you know, they got it down right. These look great. Uh, but there's really not a ton of things to talk about. I mean, the detail is there. Very clean application of the paint and everything. Looks good. I got nothing to really complain about on those. It's a very striking kind of look. Uh, really, what I'm actually most concerned about with these figures is how he scales up with the other New Japan guys and really everybody else. Because, you know, Ishii should be a little bit shorter than everybody here. So let's bring in Tanahashi. Let's bring in Okada. And they look about the same height. That's disappointing. So Ishii should be, I think, like... I think he's like 5'7", according to the internet, and Okada should be 6'3". There should be a pretty big difference in their heights, and uh, there is clearly none whatsoever. So that part, mm, that I don't like. That is definitely a, a big knock of points for me. This is a guy that's meant to be way smaller than he is, and he is not. And that's probably because they want to have more versatility with this body. They want to be able to use it again in other places. But, you know, that's something that Super 7 is going to really need to be aware of, because with pro wrestling toys especially, the fans want heights to be as accurate as possible. And especially when you've got a difference that much. So that's something to watch out for, guys. And I, I got to say, too, looking at him side by side, I'm going to actually swap heads out again just so you can see his eyes. Uh, you can see what I mean, like why I think this head looks so much better than Okada and Tanahashi. Uh, while I'm switching heads, you guys can see again. If you didn't watch my Okada and Tanahashi review, go ahead and make sure you do. But boom, let's go ahead and put the Stone Pipple back in the mix. So yeah, I think, you know, Okada's face is very smooth looking. He's meant to be a baby face, but in this case, it's like a literal baby face. And Tanahashi too, you guys can see that that's the smiling head sculpt on him. That's sculpt number two, the alternate one. It's all right, but I think with Ishii, they really nailed it. Uh, no complaints at all. It's a perfect head sculpt. So let's get these guys out of the ring. Let's talk about what else he comes with. So of course he comes with 12 hands because everybody in the series comes with 12 hands. That's six different sets of hands, all interchangeable. And they're all the same ones across the board for every single figure. In addition to the shirt and the belt and the elbow pad, which I guess they're going to count to, and the alternate head sculpt they already saw, he also comes with a steel chair. So when I think they originally showed proto photos of this, like they said the chair wasn't going to fold. Well, guess what, folks? It folds now. So for comparison, I don't have any of the Mattel WWE chairs, unfortunately. I think I have like one or two. They're not with me today. Couldn't find them. Uh, they're way harder to come by than they should be. Uh, you know, back in the Jacks days, you'd have tons of them. But yeah, nowadays, for some reason, Mattel has made them very scarce. But here is a AEW chair. This came with the pack figure from AEW Series 3. So they're both very nice chairs, and they're both very similar looking. And that's a problem for me. 
And why is that a problem? Well, in Japan, uh, typically the chairs aren't quite like this. I mean, maybe nowadays they're more looking like this. But when I think about Japanese chairs, I think about like kind of like the pie tin seats where the cushion part always pops out and hits somebody in the head with them. So, um, you know, maybe the chair isn't quite exactly the way it should look. I, I don't quite know. They might just be trying to save costs for a future because they're going to have to make a lot more chairs. Um, it's a good chair though still. I still like this chair a lot. It's a lot flatter too than this AEW one. Um, so it's a good accessory. I'm glad that someone has a chair because you got to have a chair at pro wrestling toys. But I kind of wish it was like that older style Japanese chair. And you guys who are Japanese pro wrestling fans, you know exactly the kind I'm talking about. And just an FYI, I was actually hoping this item was going to come by the time I did these reviews. Uh, on Big Bad Toy Store, there actually is a set of Japanese tables and chairs. It's like a school set. And I think it's meant to be in scale with either five inch or six inch figures but it's been delayed for now like three months. I don't know when it's coming. When I get it, I will take photos of it. I'll post them on social media and you'll see how it looks. But yeah, that's what I want. I want the Japanese table. I want the Japanese chairs. So you guys already saw how he holds up with other New Japan figures. Well, let's bring in a few other figures. And I'm going to bring in our Ultimate Edition John Cena again to show you guys how that scales up and how it looks compared to Ishii. And I'm also going to bring in Razor Ramon. This was from a recent uh, Target exclusive figure. And uh, yeah, Razor is actually a little bit taller in general than a lot of other figures. So it might not be the best size wise. Cena's a little bit closer how he should be, but that's how he looks. And again, you can kind of see just how the differences is in size of things. So you can see here that thigh joint, Ishii does not have. The boot joint that moves, he also does not have. Cena being the ultimate edition has the superior articulation of everybody because he has the double jointed elbow, double jointed knee, and the flexing toe joint, as well as a different type of buck for his torso. But for sake of comparison, let's just try a few other figures we've got from AEW. A little bit of the bubbly Chris Jericho. That was my very first AEW figure. And we've got Jushin Thunder Liger from Storm Collectibles. So Liger is surprisingly bigger than everybody just because that headpiece on top. But yeah, here's how they all look. And you know, again, these guys from New Japan came out before really AEW even announced what they were doing and that we knew they were gonna have action figures. So that's why the articulation is definitely way better on those. So I really hope if they're gonna continue making New Japan action figures, they catch up with that articulation and get on the ball because I want these to be super articulated. I think we all want them to be super duper articulated. So overall thoughts at the end of the day about this Ishii figure. Uh, again, another really, really strong one. I think, uh, I don't wanna call it my favorite because I don't think it is, but I really like how different it is. I like that the body type is very different. I think the facial expressions are the best we've seen, might be the best in the entire line to be honest. Design-wise, it's a very simple figure. The tights are very simple. The shoes are very simple. Elbow pad is easy. He's got a nice belt, although it could use a better paint job, as we mentioned. So really, you know, I want articulation to be improved. That's really the main thing for this figure here. I think otherwise, this is definitely a very strong one and, and kind of a surprising one to be so strong, too. Yeah, you, know, you would think that like Okada or Tanahashi would be my favorite, but right now, Ichi might be in the lead. But really, my biggest gripe is that height difference, and I know exactly why they're doing it. That's because they're going to reuse these molds for other toys, hopefully, or at least that's what they're hoping to do. I mean, I don't think that's like the Andre the Giant mold. I'm pretty sure it's not. But chances are they want to make things that they can use again and again and again. And that's what you do with wrestling action figures. You're not going to make a different body for every single guy as much as fans like me would love for that to happen. So I don't really know what the right thing is here for Super 7 to do. Really, it's just something to be aware of. And hopefully they'll be aware of it in the future when they do other figures. Maybe they'll find a way to actually make this work. But yeah, heights are a pretty major thing for wrestling toys. And I hope they figure out how to get around that, how to make it work. So... That's just my main thought. But otherwise, again, 45 bucks, I think it's a really good figure, good value, getting a lot of stuff with this toy. And if you're a New Japan fan, you gotta get it. Plus, it's like the only way to get that Never Championship belt too, and you definitely need to have that. So that's our look at Tomohiro Ishii from Wave 1 of Super 7's New Japan Pro Wrestling Action Figures. What a mouthful of words that is to say every time I do this video. But yeah, really cool figure. I like it a lot, pretty happy with it. And if you're a fan, I think you will be too. So if you want to get one for yourself, you could try Ringside Collectibles, depending on when you watch this. They may or may not still have it. Or you could try a Big Bad Toy Store. Otherwise, well, you're going to have to go to eBay and happy hunting, my friend. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here. And of course, before you go, make sure to check out my overview of the entire New Japan Parsing series that I've already shot. In that one, I talk a lot more in detail about the price and why I think it is the price that it is. I compare it to some more figures. We talk a little bit more in depth about some things I didn't cover in these single figure reviews. So go ahead and make sure you watch that video right now. But until next time, thanks for watching and keep that fighting spirit burning.